I'm Henry Erbach. I'm uh, director of The Glass House and have been here since April 2012. Uh, so this is the beginning of my third year here as director. The Glass House was, uh, the Glass House actually refers to two things. It refers to the building that we're in and it also refers to the campus of, of buildings that this is part of. Uh, the glass house itself was built by Philip Johnson and completed along with the brick house across the courtyard in 1949. Um, Philip acquired the site, which was originally uh, five acres, in 1946 and did uh, many different studies for the design of, uh, of the glass house before arriving at, uh, at this arrangement where essentially you have two pavilions facing one another across a courtyard, one almost entirely transparent and the other almost entirely opaque. And this opposition uh, was very important, I think, for, for Philip, who maintained through his life and career an interest in um, the way in which things were not fixed, the way in which things could change and transform and morph. And uh, we see that very much uh, in the way that the other buildings and structures on the site developed, uh, each one in a completely different uh, architectural language or sensibility. Um, but it was this kind of restless curiosity and interest in change, uh, I think, that really motivated much of, much of his work. And uh, initially, along with the glass and brick house, there was a sculpture by Jacques Lifschitz, uh, and that was the composition. It was a three-part composition. And then over the course of several decades, uh, Philip began to acquire adjacent parcels of land, and it grew from five acres to 49 acres. And uh, over time, he began adding uh, new structures, transforming the landscape. Uh, the landscape we see is uh, not a natural one. It's uh, very much a, a designed and very much a refined landscape um, uh, that uh, has very, very special qualities. Uh, in addition, with his partner David Whitney, um, Philip uh, and David together built a very important art collection uh, that was housed on the site. And in uh, 1965, they built a painting gallery, and then in 1970, a sculpture gallery. And there were also uh, a number of outdoor sculptures, some of which uh, still remain. He chose this site for a number of reasons. New Canaan, in the mid to late 1940s, was starting to develop a concentration of, uh, of modern architects. Uh, including Marcel Breuer, uh, Elliot Noyes, uh, Philip uh, Landis Goris, John Johansson, and, and others who, who would follow. Um, the community was relatively receptive uh, to modern architecture. Uh, land prices, by comparison with uh, some of the more established adjacent towns, were, were more modest. Um, and. Uh, it offered the advantage of being very close to New York, but in Connecticut where licensing requirements were a bit less strict. And so there was the possibility for uh, a young architect uh, to try something new in New Canaan. And actually there are now still about 100 modernist, mid-century modernist homes uh, left from that period here which is quite a strong concentration for, uh, for a small town. In addition, uh, when Philip saw this site, he fell in love with this promontory uh, and knew immediately that his house would be situated on this promontory, uh, which is quite, quite strong. We're on a ridge here, and there's, uh, there's uh, uh, quite a dramatic drop, drop from uh, the glass house to the landscape behind it. This was, of course, the first uh, building to be uh, finished in very large seats of plate glass. Uh, it was something that Mies van der Rohe was experimenting with and would, uh, uh, a few years later, realize in the Farnsworth house. 
uh, Philip knew about that project and uh, very uh, clearly credited.